Welcome to the Dr. Mudgill Podcast. I am so excited to have my first in-person podcast since uh, the start of the pandemic. It's been a long time. Man, it's been like a year and a half since I had a person sitting in the seat wow. across from me. And I'm super excited. So Mike is my guest today. Mike Southspeed Figueroa. He's I'm honored, a, man. He's a boxing trainer. He actually reached out to me on Instagram. Yeah, um, thank, yeah thanks wrote, for responding. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, actually, I read all my DMs and everything. Oh, so really? Yeah, Most yeah. of them are trash. But, this, <laughs> but, but yours was a good Yours was a, you, wrote, you wrote a book, um, yeah. uh, Memoirs of a Traveling Trainer During yes, the sir. Pandemic. Yes, sir. And uh, you sent it to me. I said, send yes. it to me. Yes. I read it on Monday night. Appreciate and that, And here you are Thursday. You're here. You're yeah, yeah, appreciate so, that. Thanks so much for making the trip, Thanks man. for having me here. It's an honor to have you here. Yeah, it's an honor to be here, honestly. And to be your first since I love it. the pandemic yeah. so it feels great man so just to give folks a little bit of a background about you so you know mike is a native new yorker grew up in the bronx lives in jersey city now yeah. and um you know was a trainer you know you're a certified personal trainer and you know you have a whole bunch of other accolades you know you, yeah. you, you are a boxing trainer mma trainer a fitness trainer all kinds of trainer yeah yeah and um <laughs> you know like so many of us in new york you know when the pandemic hit right you know march of of 2020 yeah. our world stopped yeah and on a dime on a dime and uh, all of us were just kind of sitting around you know trying to figure out what to do that we 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 kind of stayed open on a limited basis you know we mm. were open but there was nothing to do because everyone was scared everyone right. was in their apartments right no one we're all watching you know you said it we're yeah. all watching like yeah. in your book yeah <laughs> literally watching cnn or watching the news like all yeah. day yeah um and uh we were trying to figure out what, what what first of all what's going on so the first couple of weeks we were just kind of scared and like watching the news. But then after a couple of weeks of being home, it's like, okay, like I gotta like, <laughs> I gotta like pay my rent. I gotta yeah. make, you know, pay my bills. I gotta make some income. And I think for folks in fitness, for everyone, it was really, really hard. You know, um, I think folks that were able to run the restaurants, restaurant owners, Absolutely. take out, they kind of optimize their takeout business. But you know, a lot of restaurants went under in New York. Yeah. Every gym was closed. Yeah. Um, every trainer was unemployed. Yep. Uh, you know, it was just all of us were trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to survive in this new world? And your book really captures it well. You, Thank know, you. you basically like walk through every sort of phase Absolutely. of the pandemic, um, from just sitting around to like getting your first tr right. client to right. doing outdoor training to the BLM stuff to you know all uh, George Floyd, every, all of that. And uh, it's easy for all of us to forget. You know that was that was over a year ago. Right. You know it's right. crazy. Yeah, it's 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 yeah it's it's amazing how it seemed so long like during that time where like months seemed to be like like days seemed to feel like months and months felt like years and then now since we like over like slightly overcome you know it uh feels like a century ago you know what i mean yeah it, it really it really does yeah man. yeah yeah so talk to me a little bit about man talk to me about what your business was like before the pandemic so it was it was fine. I was operating out of Mendez Boxing. Shout outs to, to Mendez Boxing Club and um and Flatiron. Um it was going well. Um, you know, I had my, my, my clients you know, we would operate out of there and stuff. And um when I think it was um All boxing. All boxing, okay. yeah. All boxing and then, you know, typical like, you know, uh, fitness training and stuff like that, weightlifting and, and cardio training and stuff. And um when when the news about you know the the virus was happening, um, a lot of my clients were feeling really apprehensive, you know, starting to to come to the gym and stuff. And I'm gonna be honest, I was completely like naive to it. You know, I I thought that I was like, all right, this it's it's it'll it'll pass, or it's not even gonna hit us here. And um, when it did, and I got that that text message from the gym, and they were like, hey, listen, we're gonna shut down. I still was a little naive. I was like, all right, well, it'll be maybe like a few weeks or so. And it was supposed to be two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And then it ended up becoming two months and, 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 and six months and reality started to hit. And I was like, wow, this is, this is real. This is real. And, and, um, I had, you know, I was doing so well, I had, you know, anywhere from 12 to like 15 to 20 clients and I had none. None, none. All my clients um, were just like, I'm not, I, I can't do this. And, and, they, and they ventured, they left New York City. That's the crazy thing. It's that a lot of them just left. And I just was literally sitting in my living room like, number one, what am I going to do to make ends meet? Number two, how am I going to, you know, stay safe from this virus? You know, it, it was, it was. It was humbling. It was scary. It was oh my lord. It was, 
in, 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 an incredible um, experience that I went through prior yeah. to, to, you know, getting my clients back. Yeah, man. I mean, I, you know, a, a lot of that time, I remember just the, those early stages, you know, all of us, I, I didn't think it was going to be anywhere near it was, either, right. you know, and right. I don't think any of us really, really did. Right. We didn't really know what was going on, you know, it just kind of hit us like all of a sudden. Yeah. And there was so much conflicting news and it was just, you know, really just so confusing. Right. Um, first, you know, don't wear a mask, wear, wear a mask, wear two masks, don't wear a mask, right, right, wear a mask. Yeah. It was at first it was, if you're, if you're young or healthy, don't wear a mask. Right. And then, yeah. 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 So it was, um, so I remember those early weeks pretty well because yeah. I've never been home so much in my life. Mm. And, and, uh, it was kind of fun. <laughs> to be honest with you, it was kind of fun being home in the beginning yeah. with my kids. Yeah. And there's stuff. a positive to it. Yeah. And, you know, there was a lot of like, silver linings there you know life really slowed down a right, lot right, um, right for all of us yeah it did but i do remember just we'd wake up in the morning and you describe this in your book mm-hmm. you, know, you wake up in the morning you make your coffee yep. and you basically just you know, we would watch cnn so like you know right. cnn would be on yeah and it would be on like all day mm-hmm. you know because yeah. you'd, you'd wait for like the cuomo you know you talk about right. it in your book as well like right, us right. in here in new york yeah yeah watching Gover- the briefings. governor cuomo would have a briefing every morning mm-hmm. and you know, we'd all watch it to see what, what the deal was, what the numbers right. were. And it was like crazy. The numbers were going up, the hospitalizations, the deaths, everything was, it was like just nuts. And, um, you know, your day kind of started after the Cuomo briefing, at yeah. least for me, I would go work out after the Cuomo briefing yeah. or sometimes I would work out during yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but at some point, like during that, and you describe this in your book, mm-hmm. you were like, okay, like I got to like do something. Absolutely. And then you just like went for like a crazy long run yeah. from, yeah. you know, yeah, it was you started in Jersey City. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell I, us about yeah, that. Yeah, so you know, I was just um, well, at, at the time, at that time, I was living in the Bronx. At that time, okay. so um, you know, it was I was just like like you mentioned, I was w- watching you know these briefings on a daily basis, and um, it, it, the news was so grim that it, it it dwells on you. You know, it really kills any um sense of like a positive feeling that you might have, or any sense of just doing something. And um, it got to me where I just realized I was like, yo, I got, I got to get out of this. I, I can't, I can't watch this anymore. The news is not changing, and I need to, you know, and and in in a way change my news. I need to change my news. So um, yeah, I just got up and I, you know, I I've done marathons and and running. You know, it, it's very therapeutic for me. So I just, you know, revert back to something that I know that brings happiness to me, increases, you know, the endorphins in my body and stuff. And um, threw on my hoodie, you know, and and I went out for some run. I uh, went out for a run, and I've never seen the city empty. You know, it looked like there was a murderer on the loose, and in hindsight, there was, you know. And I've, ne- I mean, I I was running the streets, not the sidewalk. It was just open road, no cars, no nothing, and it was really grim. It was really like it was just scary, man, and. I was getting into a routine where I was like, okay, I got to stop watching this. And I would just run instead, run instead, run instead. And, you know, I started to, to, to feel a little bit better and, 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 and control my, my mindset because sometimes we're so influenced on the news that we, you know, we, we watch, we listen to that. I started to develop a uh, kind of my own positive hub, you know, and I was like, all right, I got to just, let go of this. This is not going to, ch- I can't change this. You know, I can only change my, my, my train of thought. And that was it. Um, but I've never seen the city, you know, so empty, you know, I was running down, you know, 42nd streets the crossroads yeah. of the world and there's totally, no one there, yeah. man. I know I was, we used to actually come, I used to go to Fridays. So some patients you have to see in person. So I, do, right. I was doing a telehealth business, but Fridays we'd go in. Right. And it would literally take me 25 minutes to get into Manhattan from here where it usually takes like an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. No one was in this. You couldn't even get where I was. I'm in Fifth yeah. Avenue and, t- and 10th Street in the village. Okay, okay. You couldn't even get a cup of coffee. Like right. there was like nothing. It yeah. was a total ghost town. Yeah, you know. And yeah, yeah it was. It was. It was. Uh, it Dude, was, it wasn't it was even insane. pigeons. Like I mentioned, yeah. it was just no one. No one was around. It was, yeah, it was just totally empty. Weird, man. Weird. So, like, talk to me. But you know, in your book, you describe like you know, you you're very. I guess someone you're know, one of your former clients mm-hmm. who was still in New York. Yeah, reached out to you. Like, when was that? In you know which month was that? Yeah, that was around um, uh, like around ending of April, early May. Okay, so um, like five or six weeks into yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I got a text, um, and we were doing so good, um, but uh, she had put on some 
you know, put on some pounds. COVID nineteen. Yeah, COVID nineteen pounds, man. Yeah. You know, and I think we all have, right? Yeah. We all put on some pounds. Um, and she just reached out to me. She was like, "Hey, listen, like, are you like, are, like, what's your situation? Are you training and so on and so forth?" And um, it was just like I, by that time already, I was already into my groove. You know, I was running. I was, so you were running. You were mad. I had my own. regiment going. You know, okay. I was ready. I was, you know, my own personal thing. I was good. And when I heard that, I was like, "Man, like, I know what she. I know what she's going through because I went through it." And now I know what I'm like, what I've de de developed here. I was like, I can help her out. And I was like, yeah, let's, let's link up. So we linked up the very next day and it was just so great to see someone, but it was so weird. Cause that was the time with the elbow bump mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and, and we all looked like mummies and we were just wrapped up and covered up and stuff. And, um, yeah, she was, she was my first client. Um, and honestly, my only client from the year from, from my original um clients that i was training all my clients now are all COVID clients they're new clients oh get out of here yeah they're all they're all new clients so talk to me about like the first client and like how did it snowball yeah so um i was i was i was training her and then um randomly there was a guy um like a few weeks later he was like hey are you a trainer this is the guy you talk about in the park that kind of came up to you yeah okay. yeah exactly and he just reached out to me and he was interested in in, in sessions and you stuff. thought he was gonna mug you or something i like thought that. he was gonna yeah 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 you know he was a bit a bit uh and that's the thing it's like <laughs> because of we haven't socialized for so long i guess the the, the way of how to like greet someone it's just it's erratic yeah. you know um, yeah. And he reached out, I mean, you know, he, he reached out to me and was like, Hey, are you a trainer and stuff? And, and, uh, yeah, we solidified a date and then it was just a snowball effect after that, you know, it's training other clients. And then I was referred to other clients. Um, and then sometimes I would get calls from previous clients and some of them were still apprehensive behind it. Um, and then I was just on a groove, you know, um, I always, like I said, I was training under one roof, Mendez boxing and these clients, you know, um, you know, one's in Manhattan, one's in Brooklyn, um, train and like, like you have a gym in your home. So, you know, you need certain equipment and stuff like that. You know, my equipment was in my bag. I had to find quick to go type of thing. So like resistance bands, cones, and, um, I had a, you know, 20 pound bag filled with just different, you know, workout stuff. And then you have I, to I like, use it. Not to interrupt you, yeah, but yeah. I like that part in your book where you're, you're, you had your first client. You're like, oh, okay, well, awesome. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do with that? Yeah, her? I had to look at my closet. you just started pulling shit out <laughs> yeah, from around your house, like absolutely. cones and Yeah, I had to use my son's, and, yeah, my yeah. son's soccer cone and, and a 20 pound kettlebell and, and all sorts of stuff and just get creative behind it. Um, and then, you know, just traveling everywhere. Um, and along my travels, I was just taking notes, you know, I was taking notes because I've never, you know, I'm a native New Yorker. I've been here all my life. I've never seen the city like this. And, you know, I'm just seeing a lot of weird shit, you know, um, and I'm taking notes along the way, taking notes along the way. And just even my, you know, uh, relationships with my clients, you know, we've had some really in-depth talks and, conver you know, conversations and stuff like that. And um, just taking notes. And with not an idea of like to write a book, I had, I had no idea. Like I wasn't, that wasn't at all for me to be an author, but just, it was, it was therapeutic at that time because not too, virtually not anyone knew that I was like writing these notes, but they were just like journals. To so me. you do it on your phone? Yeah, on my phone, you know, on my notes on iPhone and just writing things down. And I would, you know, get on the train and be like, uh, this, that happened. Or I would see things on the fly and I, I was watch it, you know, unravel. And then on my phone, I was like, Oh wow, this, you know, and it wasn't until probably November, late October, November. I was like, wow. Like just scrolling through my notes. I was like, man, this has, like, I would love to share this, the perspective of what a, all these trainers, because I was seeing other trainers along the way too. Train it was like the top of a babble. Like I saw all these trainers that we all were under one roof were just scattered everywhere. And like, hey, hey, hey. And you know, the the irony is like you're risking your health to get healthy. It's just it, it's yeah. just a one of a kind organic um story. And and I was like, you know what? I, I gotta DI, I'm a DIY guy, so I was like, I gotta self publish it. I gotta do it. So, yeah. I, I I just did, man. I love it, man. I Thank you. It. I appreciate I mean, it. There's man. so much that we gotta 
kind of go rewind and yeah. talk about stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, because your book really does capture. Appreciate that. Thank the you. The pandemic really. Well. I mean, I kind of like relived it while I was reading. It. I was like, wow, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, okay, yeah. That, that's right. that's <laughs> all right. those okay. illustrations yeah. I took myself. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, yeah, these were all pictures I took off my phone. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Um. So I know, like, around. In the beginning, it was like you're right. Like you don't know those first six weeks. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anybody. You know, I'd see people in my office. And even right. we didn't know. Right. We were You know, every like a cough was like a fart. Like uh, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's like someone's coming. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you got corona. Like, right, you know, right. Doing stay back or right. like, you know Purell or you know. Yeah, yeah. It was really it was just a really wild yeah, time. Yeah. And then at like some point, um. You were allowed to like have outdoor. You were allowed to like mm -hmm. meet people outside. Mm -hmm. and, you know, had to keep your six feet distance or whatever. Yeah. You know. And there was, people were really lonely. You know, it was like a very, very, you know, we were all, for folks that don't have a family or don't have right. like a, a uh, you know, folks in their home, mm -hmm. you were literally like by yourself, like mm -hmm. for an extended period. Yeah. You talk about like one point where you were walking home, like you had just finished training and you were just going to like walk a couple of blocks, but yeah. it was like a nice day. So you just kept walking. And all this was like right around the time where all the George Floyd stuff right. was going on. You talk about how you were, Training somebody and like you know it started to get can get to like a dark place. You turn a Beyonce on, yeah, <laughs> just to kind of change the mood. It did, yeah, and like you know just, just just to change the mood. But around that time, like you just saw this protest go by, yeah. you know, and it was just seeing people together, and you know that like it was all I, folks got, <laughs> of all well, different yeah. colors, you know, like yeah, yeah, everyone was basically you know m mourning the yeah. loss of this yeah. person. But like also being very vocal about how there needs to be change. Absolutely. And you know, and you were and you say in your book it was like there was white, there was Asian, there mm -hmm. was black, there was Hispanic, there was every every it was race. like the UN. Yeah. You know, 100%. in this crowd. Yeah. And yeah, it really you know, you'd see that with the protests on TV and stuff, or you were actually you know, I'd see them walk by me yeah. in the city too. Yeah. But it was a really wild thing. It was like folks were it was it was a horrible thing to have to rally around. Right. You know. But you just saw that folks really were starving yeah. for, like, you know, human Change. contact. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, before, uh, you know, uh, one of my good friends told me this, um, in order for things to get better, sometimes things have to get worse. And they have to get really worse, unfortunately. And, you know, it, it, it showed how toxic we, like, we a uh, society we lived in overall so you have this pandemic you have this unjust like it's just a lot of toxicity and it was just seeping out i mean and what you do you you know you have uh pimples or and right and cysts it was just like it was like we were just a cyst yeah. ready to erupt you know and it, it was just it was just um it's an in, it was an interesting time to, to, to just be alive during that time. Number one, to be alive, right? It's just like, it's a blessing. And then to see these things that were changing, these cultural changes, these, these justice changes, all this, like, it was incredible. And like you mentioned, I was, I was walking, I was coming out of my, you know, from, from a client and I'm just walking the streets, um, cross, uh, going from west to east. And um, it's just, you know, like a, this thunderous, crowd you could just see, like it sound like you know like like a yankee game like the game's over and you just hear you know and i'm like oh snap it's the protest going on and i'm just seeing every, i'm seeing kids with you know like families like families and it's infectious man i just felt like that 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 vibration just like from the concrete man and i was like yo i gotta jump in this man you know and um yeah and i, and I marched along you know um yeah, just thinking about it, you know, and and I'm so glad that I, I did write this book. I documented all these things because as you think about it, like you said, we tend to forget yeah. immediately. And and you're reminding me things more and more. I'm like, man, that that was that was a dope moment. That was really dope. Yeah, that was a wild time. I remember driving down Fifth Avenue. So there was a protest in Union, that really bad protest in Union Square. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. And that ha that was like the day before it was I crazy came to the city. Yeah, and. You know, we were driving down Fifth Avenue. I have a video on my phone right. where literally everything is boarded up. Like the whole, like yeah. everything is boarded up. There was like, you know, like, I, like in the, where my practice is like kind right. of like a swanky right. part of Fifth Avenue. And right. there was like just graffiti everywhere. Looked like Mad Max. Yeah. Man. It was, it was, I mean, it was just yeah. wild. Yeah. Like the world yeah. had turned upside down, yeah. you know? Yeah. It was, it was, um, it was, 
a humbling and like eye opening um just sight, you know what I mean? Like like I said, I've never seen anything like yeah. this, you know? Um awesome. Yeah, it was it was wild, man. It was um it was a mixture of like what my dad said, you know, my dad's sixty five, so he was part of the I don't know what year it was, like in the seventies when we had a blackout. It was like a, a New York City blackout. And he was like it was like a mixture of that with me growing up of like watching nine eleven. So it was like a combination of just it was just chaos, yeah. man. No one knew what to do. You know, not even our our, our government and you know, it was just there's so much stuff going on at yeah. one time. It's the fact that we're here is just amazing, to be honest. It really is, man. Yeah, it's, it's, we survived. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, so another part of your another part of your book and your story that I thought was very interesting was you know things were grooving. You were having you had all these clients. You were like literally going from bar to bar out. Yeah. Like you know, you talk about one one part where you were like just really bouncing from bar to bar, mm -hmm. and, and like you were solo energy because you hadn't eaten anything you were like you know yeah. the subways weren't working properly and yeah, yeah all that sort of stuff that doesn't change no, anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, mta yeah. still will be uh you know it is actually still a mess i still figure <laughs> it, it out. still is man yeah um, unreliable <laughs> then it started getting cold out yeah and so you're that you Oof. had like a thriving business but it yeah. was too cold to train mm -hmm. and you had yeah. like one holdout yeah until like november and cool. then he shout out or to, she yeah dropped. yeah shout yeah. out to yeah shout out to kelsey she she held on for so long um yeah we were we we were rocking until like november you know with coats on and, and scarves and then we had in the park that we were operating we had no lights so you know the sun's coming down you know the summertime the sun comes down like 8 15 8 17 so i was able to you know uh, have uh, a little bit more clients, but then this sun's coming down at like 5 p.m. So now my clients are changing. I'm having a minimum amount, and um, I, I had to shop around for 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 a place. And at that time, the gyms had opened up. Some of my clients were really reserved to going back into the gyms, so um, I was shopping around, shopping around. Um, and then a lot of gyms were really taking advantage of this situation. They were charging ridiculous amount monthly and stuff like that. And I was referred uh, to Bout, Bout Boxing Club. Shout outs to Bout. Um, you know, they were like, come through, whatever, check it out. And I came through and it was like a reunion. It was all the trainers that were at Mendez. You know, they're all there. And we're all masked up. But, you know, you, you can you could tell that this is, you know, Jane or John or whoever like you, you know, and it was it was fun. And um, I spoke to a gentleman by the name of Colin. Uh, we know him as Pops, Colin Morgan. And, um, you know, he told me what the what the 411 was and, you know, how much the gym was and so on and so forth and the rules and stuff. And um, I, I reached out to my client, texted and I was like, hey, listen, this is it. You know, so she came through, she checked it out, she loved it. And she was like, all right, let's rock. Um, and then once again, the same um, practice, trying to gain the confidence of my client, of my clients. You know, at first it was like trying to gain them to feel comfortable to train again and now to have them train under a roof. So um, that was a challenge, you know, um, but it, um, you know, they, they, everyone's coming back. Gyms are, are filling up and stuff and, and we're good now, but 70% of my trainings are still outside. Is that right? Yeah, and I think, which is interesting because I think this is becoming the new norm now. People are just starting to feel more comfortable and training outside. And um, I like to think that I was one of the pioneers <laughs> of out outdoor training, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just um, my creativity was challenged, man. I really had to like dig deep and, and, and just find things to like keep people engaged and fun and it was it was exhausting, but um, it was like a you know a internship for myself to be like how good am I and how good could I be, and I'm I'm glad in a way that this happened to me. I, I was able to, to to write a book and I was able to strengthen uh you know my my skill set as a trainer. Yeah, of course, man. Yeah, yeah. you you made lemonade as that. Yeah, thing. yeah, I made uh, chicken salad. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about what you guys did in your training sessions, because you know you had a very you know limited amount of yeah, limited. absolutely. So yeah. What is the what's the workouts? An hour long. Yeah, so they're yeah hour long uh, workouts. Um, so like the first ten minutes would be um just like jump rope, um shadow boxing, and then we'll wrap up and then get ready for about four or five rounds of of mitt work, and 
normally when you're at the gym, you know, it'll probably be maybe like three rounds of boxing on the mitts and then maybe three rounds on the heavy bag. Um, but there's no heavy bag. So you have to, you know, extend a little bit more rounds in with mitt work. And it's a little bit, it, it is, it is strenuous on my shoulders. So it's like, you, you think, you know, you're training 15 clients. That's uh, 15 hours of constant pounding on your elbow joints and, and your rotator cuff and stuff. So that was, that was, that was tough. That was challenging. Um, but yeah, we'd be boxing for about uh, 30 minutes. And then um, I had the resistance band, so we'll do uh, strength training with the resistance bands. We would do agility workouts with the agility ladder. Um, and then a lot of strength and conditioning using like the kettlebells and the, and the medicine ball. Um, and that was it. And then the challenging part about it was that some clients were just like, they've gotten so strong that it's like, all right, what else am I gonna do? You know, and sometimes you're like stuck in a pickle where you're like, I. I, there's really nothing else for us to do, you know? Um, but that was, that was it. That was, that was the, the routine, um, 80% of, of the time. So most of your clients, I mean, boxing is a big part of like extra yeah. conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. The, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, and it's a, th and it's therapeutic, right? Cause at that time people had a lot of frustration and, and, um, you know, just a lot of like stress. So, you know, just punching something, you know? Yeah. I mean, like I said, man, I was, I felt it on my, yeah. you know, I knew someone was having a bad day, you know, I was like, man, this is, I, this is one, this one's punching harder than usual, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, it, it served as like, you know, it's, it's a, you know, dual purpose, right? So it's, it's, you're getting in shape and releasing stress at the same time and learning how to defend yourself. Try yeah. purpose. All important. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. All, all necessities, necessities, man. All right, Mike. So I want to learn a little bit more about the actual like process of publishing your book because you know i just finished my book and I, and I realized that when you're done writing the book is that's when like the work really starts right. the typesetting designing the cover right so just a few things one is when did you realize you had like a, when did the idea actually crystallize that the material that you've been like you know sort of journaling right is book worthy yeah and then just talk to me about the actual process of getting the book together getting it on amazon all that sort of yeah stuff. yeah um so you know, I, I, I have this material, you know, a year's worth on uh, of notes on my phone. And um, I spoke to a friend of mine uh, by the name of Kyrie Chapman. And I told him, I was like, um, dude, I have like like a journal. You think I could turn this into a book? Just randomly like, talking to you. He was like, yeah. He was like, I would read it. And I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, I would definitely read it, man. I, like the, the perspective is interesting. And... I felt that way, but you know, once again, you're like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not an author, you know? So, um, just hearing that, I was like, all right, cool. And then, um, a friend of mine is Tracy. Um, she honestly helped me physically. Like she believed that this could be a book and she, she's, uh, her, I think her major was English and she was like, just send me these notes. And I could send her the notes and she was like looking at them and she was like, this is good. This is good gave me some tips on how to, you know, word things and so on and, so, and how to like really format into a book. And once I did that, um, I was, I, I, I didn't know what the process was. So I kind of shopped around on like, like publishing companies and how to self publish and, and all that stuff. And I heard about self publishing and I, uh, reached out to, um, a friend of mine who did a book through uh, Lulu publishing. And he was like, yeah, um, you know, you just got to have, make sure that you have a format and chapters and all that stuff. Like it has to like look like a book. So then I went to a website called Fiverr, reached out to a guy who uh, actually turns journals and all that stuff into like books and uh, formatted it, came up with like, um, gave me different options of like different fonts that I wanted. And, and I chose the font that I wanted. And then a friend of mine's, um, his name is Travis Vargas. He's a, um, a graphic designer. Um, I, I pitched the book to him and I was like, dude, I would love for you to like design the cover for it. And I gave him the concept of like, you know, um, I wanted something that to capture like my day to how I looked every single day. And, uh, we came up with, um, just having that shot of me literally with my book bag, you know, just like turning towards like, you know, a street sign. 
with the mask on. with the mask yeah. on man and it was the most you know because it's, it's relative like we all wore that we all you know what i mean like that's that's the connecting piece and uh once he designed that formatted at it, uh, formatted it into a book and then uh send it to uh, uh lulu publishing um they published it um and then there's uh you know go global distribution and it has to it has to be approved um you have to approve it first. They send you a physical copy of it, and then you approve of it, and then Lulu um, pitches it to Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all that stuff, and um, all these realtor, uh, all these real uh, realtors, uh, whatever, um, approved it, and and that's it. Now this book is sold over, I don't know how many you know stores across the world, but I just checked the other day it was at a at some uh, store in Australia. That's awesome. Yeah, man. so it's, yeah, it's, it's everywhere now. That's crazy. And what about the Audible book? How did you do that part of it? So the Audible book, um, I at that time I was like, you know what, I want it because I, um, one of my clients was like, I really don't read like books. I just listen to like a lot of Audibles, and she was like, you should do an Audible, and I was like, ah, oh, you know what I mean? Like I don't have the equipment to do so, so I hired a voice actor uh, by the name of Johnny Unitas. Not the football player. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's his name. Yeah. And um, I loved his voice. I felt like his voice captured um, the essence of who I am and the story. And um, I hired him. He, he did the book. And um, he did the Audible book. And um, yeah, it's now it's on Audible. It's on iTunes. That's cool. Yeah. And um, and that's doing well, too, right now, too. A lot of people are, are listening through it. So, yeah. That's fine. Braille's that's next. I'm going to do Braille. I like it. <laughs> that's awesome, man. You're everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. man. For that's everyone. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not, you know, it's the Audible book is the last piece of my puzzle. So I'm actually, I'm actually was literally working on that right before you walked in. Okay, today. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, think you enjoy it, man. It's, it's, yeah. it's good. It's good. It's really good. It's, it's like um, the same story, but like from two different perspectives, man. He did a solid job, knocked it out. That's awesome. I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah, man. yeah, I'll yeah. Check it yeah. Out. So what's next? So, um, the next thing right now, um. Next week, uh, one of my one of my fighters, uh, Lena Katano, we uh, we just won a tournament on last past Saturday in Mount Vernon. Uh, it's called the Metros, um, and we qualify for the National Golden Glove. So we're we're flying out to Oklahoma on Monday, Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, and our goal is to win the National Golden Gloves, and then after that is the Olympic uh, Trials. Um, so that's next right now, physically. Um, that's big time. That's big. You know, yeah, it's there. It's there. <laughs> Um, and overall, I think that the, the next big thing is, um, I'm going to go, go to back to school. I'm going to be a, a, a school counselor. That's great. This, this pandemic has like opened my eyes on how influential my words and, and attitude has been to other people that I think my true calling and what I really feel passionate about is, is counseling, like consoling people and being a, a school counselor is uh, my next my next um, objective right now. I love it, man. Yeah. You, you know, I do. I think there are a lot of parallels between being a personal trainer and like being a therapist yeah. and being a counselor. You know, my tra- my trainer for years was a guy named Rasan Robinson. He was just like the guy who basically helped me transform my body. Right. And we'd worked out forever. Became like one of my best friends. Um, you know, there was times where I was training six times a week, mm. and it was funny because. My book actually was born out of conversations that we would have about like hustling mm. and achieving goals and grinding and all right. that sort of stuff. But it, literally, you know, it would, it would there were like therapy sessions. Like, you know, yeah. we were training and, you know, like lifting and all that stuff. But just those conversations, like, you know, we became very close friends. So it was right. like, it was therapy for both of us yeah. Yeah. eventually. But yeah. um, there are a lot of parallels, you know, like when Absolutely. you're transforming someone's body, you're transforming their mind at the same time. Yeah. And, and that mental... There's nothing more powerful than a physical transformation because it it dips into so many aspects of someone's life. Like, you, of course, your body physically transforms and you get confidence and you feel better about yourself. But really, the strength that you get mentally from that transformation, you know, getting up early, get those workouts in, dialing in your macros, yeah, you know, doing things, getting those workouts in while other people are sleeping, realizing how much potential that exists within each of us. That really spills over into every aspect of your life. And I imagine transitioning from being a trainer to counseling kids, it's, it's very much the same thing. You're basically trying to get folks to realize how much potential lives within, inside of them. Absolutely. I mean, 
like I mentioned, I, I, I wrote a book. I'm a kid from the Bronx, you know, um, a GD graduate, like, you know, this brought out my potential, you know, um, everyone has this like ridiculous amount of potential. It's scary. It's really scary. Like if you can really dig deep and find out what you're capable of, man, it changes your day. You know, yeah. it changes your day. Um, and if I can, you know, just, just implement that and people day to day, I mean, people would just be happier and, and, and really know, like just confident about themselves. You know, I, I think a lot of people are just not really happy and doing what they're doing. And I, for many years worked in, in office jobs. I've worked in office services. I worked in mail rooms for like law firms in the, in the city and I was just really unhappy. And this is the first time in my life for a in a long time that I'm really happy. I enjoy doing what I do. Um, and everyone's capable of that. You just gotta find it, you know, circumstances, conversations, situations, through through those elements, you find out what you want to do. Then you gotta take risks. Like you got you too. gotta take chances, man. You gotta take chances. You can't be afraid, man. Fear is an acronym, right? False mm -hmm. reality appearing real. That's that's. I like that. Yeah, yeah. you can have it, man. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll put it on the it's on the podcast forever. Yeah. Now. Hey, man. Well, listen. That's what this platform is all about, man. It's about you know someone listening to this and saying, "Wow, man, like." That guy's like me. Yeah. You know, I'm a kid from the Bronx. Yeah. Yeah. Who has a GED. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, you could do it, folks man. said that, you know, I would, I, 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 you hear, I'm sure you've heard a lot of no's in your life. Yeah. I'm sure with this book, you heard a lot of no's. You, in fact, you know, you were just telling me about it before. Yeah. Where you talked to your friend in publishing. He's like, nah. Yeah. You know, but look, you have a published book, right? Yeah. So, yeah. It's all about, you know, filtering. And we were talking about this earlier, like when you're watching the news and kind of during the pandemic and just filling your mind with negativity and like doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that goes into our mind, it's fertilizer for our brains, fertilizer for our thoughts, fertilizer for our mindset. And you can either choose to fertilize your mindset with positivity, right. you know, uh, crushing goals, you know, all good things, or you could pollute your mind yeah. with negative thoughts, negative energy, negative people. Um, yeah. And, uh, I, I just can't thank you enough for sharing your story, man. Thank no, you so much. I appreciate much. that, Thanks man. Thank this. you so much. Thank you for, you know, having me on your on your podcast, man. It's one of the most influential podcasts out there. So, you know, appreciate to be that. a to be a component, you know, in the process of you getting, you know, people back on here again, it, it feels great, man. And I'm happy to be on. So thank you, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for being my first guest. Yeah, man. That means man. a lot to in me, the flesh. man. Yeah. All right, <laughs> yes, Rush. yes. Let's get it, man. Thanks again. <laughs> yeah.